Hey everybody, Elric here. Don't worry, I'll get to this week's inane story in a few moments, but since this one is so short, I want to have a brief editorial on something called the Mandela Effect. Partially, I want to talk like a scientist, since that's my character's modus operandi and my real life major. And yes, I'm no, I'm not the first person to talk about this. Basically, the mental effect refers to a phenomenon in which multiple people have a common, historically inaccurate memory. It was named after arguably its most famous example, being the alleged death of the politician Nelson Mandela during his prison sentence. As we can all see for ourselves, that didn't happen. But that doesn't mean multiple people don't swear with full sincerity that they saw a newspaper reporting this. Some possible explanations could be tabloid spoof newspapers, of which there is no shortage in the world, that people saw as kids and thought they were real, but there's no real to tell. How I learned about this was the Berenstein Bears. Oops, I meant Berenstain. Yeah, sounds weird, doesn't it? But that's actually the official spelling, named after Stan and Jen Berenstain. It's actually possible that this one was a common typo on licensed media such as this VHS tape. Doesn't help that the title on all these books is in cursive, which it's not unthinkable that young kids and even adults would find confusing to read, especially when you compare a cursive A and E. To be honest, I had no idea who Nelson Mandela was until I heard about this, but the bear's name was hard for me to accept. Usually it's stuff that doesn't really matter that much unless you're playing Trivial Pursuit or something. But it eats at people. We're naturally inclined to want to find answers. We also hate admitting we're wrong, especially when it seems like too much of a coincidence for that and any people to be wrong. The more dramatic explanation is that the people with the faulty memories come from an alternate timeline to our home universe. Don't get me wrong, as a scientist, I believe in the multiverse theory, which the multiverse theory is that variables such as human action or human behavior or any animal action or any animal behavior, or even something as simple as particles acting at the quantum level will lead to alternate versions of our future and our universe coexisting at the same time. Whether you can cross between these alternate timelines, I'm not able to say. Even if we are, it seems like a pretty specific set of random differences for us to cross over. Ah oh well, here's hoping I cross over into the free pizza universe. Well, back to our feature presentation. Alright, to start this off with, I want to let you all know that I work in fast food as a maintenance guy, meaning I'll do all the dangerous activities like filtering 375 degree grease using a machine that's older than I am and at least twice as gross. For legal reasons, I'm not going to go around telling you what company I work for, but I will tell you that my job also entails cleaning the windows. Normally, this is one of the more relaxing parts of my morning. Except when you clean the doors, you're constantly pausing to let customers in and out. But that's fine. It's the front doors. People gotta eat, and we gotta make money. So, I tolerate it. What absolutely makes my day is, guys, what I like to call... Well, how do I put this? I call him Mr. Beady Eyes. Apparently, he was trying to sell a car. Yeah, yeah, you know the type. And he walked up to me and asked me if I was washing the windows. Naturally, this would normally be a moment for me to pull out my horrible, biting, rude sarcasm, but, you know, I want, I need to keep this job. So I told him, indeed I am, sir, in the straightest face I can possibly muster. He says, ah, oh, cool, I'm actually here waiting for someone to come buy this car from me. I'm like, 
Oh yeah? Which car, which car are you selling anyway? I don't know why I asked. I was just making conversation. And he pointed to actually a really beautiful Mustang. It was like a red Mustang. Or it could have been a Corvette. I'm not good with cars. But anyway, I told him, yeah, it's a really nice looking car. And he says, yeah, it's a nice looking car, but it's got a few problems. I'm like, and it's like, well, yeah, otherwise you wouldn't be selling it. But I didn't say that. What I, what I said was, oh, what problems does it got? And he said, well, it doesn't go in reverse and the brakes don't work. It was then I realized that he had parked this vehicle right behind my car. I wished him luck in selling the vehicle and I proceeded to get the rest of my work done as fast as possible so I could clock out as soon as possible. As much as I needed hours, I didn't need this guy rear-ending me. Luckily, I got out before my car was demolished to find that his customer had show up, showed up. It was a middle-aged woman who was understandably not pleased with the problems the car had. Well, all I heard from her was, well, I guess I'll just crash into my office and then impale the security guy with my hood ornament. <laughs> oh boy. That, that gave me the Im mental image of this car speeding down the freeway, getting exponentially faster, and for some reason I pictured Bill Murray driving this vehicle onto the set of Beetlejuice and wreaking havoc. I don't know why, but Godspeed, Dr. Venkman.